welcome to um, our Nowruz event at uh, Iran and American Bar Association, IABA. My name is Huri Kalilian, and I am uh, a co-founder and an advisory board member of IABA. Um, it's my pleasure to speak about the uh, history of IABA, but before doing so, um, I would like to announce with happiness and pride the um, achievements of IABA in the past 15 years for the hard working of its members and especially the hard working of its new generation attorneys, uh, their energy and enthusiasm and their talent and hard work actually uh, helped our Iranian community in such a great deal, so much so that we have now enjoying a more elevated and enhanced positive image in our in US in general. And we managed also to inform and educate our um, um, lawmakers and the public at large uh, about the issues, legal issues of interest to our Iranian community. Um, we ensured um, a full um, understanding and, um, and accurate information about the matters of interest to our community. Um, now going back to, to our history, I believe it was sometime, if my memory <laughs> it's right. It was sometime in 1999 that um, we get together, four of us, myself, Sharof Babai, who is present here, uh, Babak Mughi, and Afshin Ratsan. We um, get together in the law firm of Skadden Arps when um, uh, Babak used to work. And uh, it was, of course, after a long day work for all of us. So we were exhausted from work, but we, we were getting together passionately and discussing this new um, entity that we were, um, you know, so enthusiastic about. And um, after our first meeting, we were meeting actually regularly in, in DC, in the same office, and we had heated discussions and conversations and debate about many, many, many different aspects of IABA, including its name, um, its agenda, missions, objectives, um, outreach to community. Um, we debated the logo of IABA um, because we wanted to, pro to portray both Iranian and American language and culture in the logo. Um, we then um, started, of course, drafting the bylaws and constitution uh, of the organization. We registered it. We prepared our file for 501c3 status. Um, it, I believe it took more than a year before we felt we were ready to open the doors to launch IABA and to invite our other Iranian attorneys to, to come and, um, and, and join us. So, our first um, public meeting again um, in 2000 was uh, at the law firm of Skadden Arps. And we had, I believe, about 20 attorneys. Most of them are very young, very young Iranian attorneys who couldn't understand Farsi very well. Well, our um, uh, official language was English for IABA. But, um, that night, when I looked around and looked at these beautiful and handsome faces of all these young lawyers, um, I guess my motherly instinct was really elevated, and I felt I need to reach to them and talk to them in Farsi <coughs> to have a more heart-to-heart -heart communication, as well as English. So, um, afterwards, actually, funny enough, most of them came and said that they did understand the Farsi part much better, maybe because my English is bad or maybe they were very polite. But um, the message that I wanted to, to actually give at that time is the same as I want to emphasize on tonight. 
And that was that uh, I really needed to communicate that as attorneys, we are, we really have the utmost responsibility and uh, an obligation to uh, protect our societal rights, our legal, legal rights of our people. So this is a great, great privilege. And it, at the same time, it, it really is a, is a duty and obligation to raise against injustice, illegality, prejudices, unfairness, whatever and, and whatever, whenever we see it. It may be disguised in different color or shape or form, but we have to be cognizant of it and see it through and fight against it. If it is against ourselves, our friends, our relatives, our other fellow um, American or Iranian people. And, and so um, I am pleased to, to say that after almost 15 years, IABA uh, grew from four attorney members now to 1,500 uh, attorneys, full attorneys and uh, law students nationwide. Um, after having only one office in Washington, now we have nine chapters nationally. And the work that IBA has done in the past 15 years um, has been always to protect the rights of the Iranian uh, community in America. Um, we have raised uh, issues before um, the lawmakers, um, the, um, the executive admin administrative uh, branches of the government, um, local government, um, and issues of interest to Iranians. For example, um, uh, Iranian trade regulation laws and its outreach, and uh, sometimes its unfairness for certain type of agenda or work that Iranians were involved with. Um, like, you know, there were so many, many, many cases. A couple of them came to mind. It's the case of Mohammad Reza Banki, who in New York, who was actually getting money from his mother's inheritance, and he was arrested in New York. And then it was a case against students um, uh, of Minneapolis, um, some in University of Minneapolis, who actually their bank accounts were closed um, by TSF Bank. Also, during the, um, because of the earthquakes and the victims of earthquakes in Kashan and um, um, I think Beishar, I think, um, IABA um, um, asked for a special consideration for monetary fund to be sent to Iran, uh, you know, with outside the sanction. Also, um, as I recall, during the, um, the uh, after September 2001, um, Iranian students were unfairly uh, 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 judged by INS and un unfairly treated. So IABA had to uh, prepare letters and press releases against that. Um, we have also been very, very active uh, to protect humanitarian and civil rights attorneys, to protect the life and liberties of these attorneys in Iran. Um, an example comes to mind of Mr. Shafi, who um, actually defended the rights of the uh, hikers, American hikers in Iran. And after the hikers were released, he was uh, arrested for the charge of espionage. 